So, we are ready to create another UV sphere and take a closer look on the parameters. Let us examine the operator panel in detail. The topmost parameter is the object name. Changing this name here will actually change three different elements in Blender. First, the name of the object itself. Then the name of the mesh. And finally the name of the associated sculpt map. You can examine the sculpt map in the UV image editor. It is this black square here, and at this moment it is completely black because it not yet contains any data. Later we will see that it eventually contains a color encoded representation of your object. And technically it is an RGB image. The content of this image will be constructed later by using a very special UV map, with very specific properties and constraints. These properties have been defined by Linton Labs, and they are the same for all sculpted prims in the world. Primstar silently creates the correct UV map in the background, and names it, Sculpty. Note that Blender can no longer create the Sculptmap for you, if you rename or remove this UV map. UV maps are normally used to map areas of two-dimensional images, so-called UV faces, to faces on three-dimensional models. Because of this, Blender displays the set of UV faces as an overlay on top of the image display in the UV image editor. For sculpted prims the UV map is always arranged as a collection of square UV faces organized in rows and columns without any holes. Primstar uses the UV data, but it maps the vertices of the 3D model to pixels on the scalp map. In short terms, each vertex of the model is transformed into an RGB color pixel, and the UV map tells Primstar where it has to place this pixel on the scalp map. So by now it should be clear that the scalp map is not a texture, but a data container filled with the color encoded representation of the 3D model. And this data container is what we will eventually package into an RGB image, and transfer to Second Life, where it transforms again to a 3D object. Now back to the operator panel. It is a very good practice to give your objects reasonable names. This will help you later to find them again. Let me disable the subdivision levels by setting the level count to zero. I will get back to this in a minute. Now look at the object. You see eight faces around its circumference. And eight faces along its vertical axis. Now take another look at the associated UV map. And I really mean the UV map here, and not the sculpt map. The UV map is made of 8 faces along U, and 8 faces along V. Each face on the model corresponds to exactly one face in the UV map. Please note that right now this sculpt D has 8 times 8 faces, but its sculpt map uses 16 times 16 pixels. If you want to understand why this is so, then please take a look at my tutorial about the basics of sculpted prints. You can find this tutorial on the Machini Matrix website. For now please keep the following rules of thumb in your mind. A scalp map needs 2 times 2 pixels for each UV face. Consequently the width and height of a scalp map in pixels is twice its number of faces in U and V. Now let us turn back to the operator panel and increase the value of U from 8 to 9. We get one more column of faces on the object, and since each face of the model needs to be mapped to one face on the UV map, Primstar also has to add one more column of UV faces. But the UV map is already completely filled up, and therefore Primstar has to increase the size of the sculpt map along the U-axis. But it cannot simply add the needed space to the sculpt map as indicated here. Sculpt maps for sculptees always have to use sizes of power of 2 for the width and height. And because of that, the sculpt map size doubles along the U axis as soon as we increase the face count to values above 8. 
and furthermore the UV faces are no longer necessarily squares, we now also find rectangles. But this irregular UV map is not supported by sculpted prims. Hence when Primstar creates the Sculpt map, it will always generate extra vertices to force the UV faces to end up as squares. And because of this, the finally created Sculpties always have power of two face counts in U and in V, regardless of how many U faces and V faces you have selected in the operator panel. So, for our object with 9 faces in U and 8 faces in V, the finally created sculpt map will have 16 faces in U. And the highlighted extra columns of vertices have been silently added by Primstar. When we increase the number of faces along U more and more, we see that we get more and more square faces on the UV map. And as soon as the value of U equals 16, we again see an equidistant distribution of UV faces. But remind that any number between 9 and 15 U faces will always be translated into a sculpted prim with 16 U faces. And when we go further, then we see that the UV mat doubles again along the U axis, and all starts over again as described before, and now the resulting sculpt map will have 32 faces along U, as long as U is in the range from 17 to 32. So, after I have explained all of this, I recommend that you keep a power of two values in U and V for a while. This will in most cases let your final sculpted prim use the same face count as your initial model. Let us turn to the face count on the V-axis. Here we see the exact same behavior as we have seen for the U-faces. We can continue until we get to 32 times 32 faces. This is the default configuration for a sculpted prim. Here the face count sums up to 1024 in total, and this is exactly the configuration of the default sculpty sphere. Please note that the sculpt map size is now 64 times 64 pixels. But now we have another problem. We have to take care about a lot of faces in the editor. On the positive side, this allows us to modify each face and each word text separately. But this can quickly get a very frustrating and time-consuming job. Well, there is an alternative. In the next chapter we will create the same model with only 64 faces and two additional subdivision levels. See you later!